Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and today I'm going to start a series of videos called Watch and Learn. What I want to do is start to do some videos that are more educational, possibly less commercial, and walk you through watches, all about them. You know, topics will pop into my mind and I'll try to cover them. You know, there's some obvious topics, you know, types of watches, manufacturers, um, but I like to really start with the basics first, you know, the components of a watch, what makes up a watch, not inside, but on the outside, what we call everything. And, um, you know, where this came from is I get people that will email and will say something about the little knobby thing on the, you know, that sticks out from the watch and they, they don't know what that's called. So uh, I think it's important to kind of start with the basics and we'll move on from there. We'll see where the videos go. Hopefully they are of interest and you know, you, you'll thirst for some more, maybe you give me some ideas of things you'd like to see covered. Uh, a bit about myself, I've been selling watches for about 13 years, I'm not a watchmaker. I did take a couple of brief lessons uh, through Time Zones online watchmaking school many years ago, but I, I gave it up. I didn't have the hands for it. I, I am a mechanical person, uh, I do have a, a mechanical engineering degree. I worked as a mechanical engineer for many years, uh, but watches, and the, the size and the scale just totally, you know, was lost on me and I, I couldn't do it. Um, rather sell them and just, you know, be enthralled by them like a lot of uh, the viewers are. So, as this is the first video or the first watch and learn I'm going to do, I'd like to just talk about, uh, you know, watches, how we identify them, you know, how we talk about their size and you know, when you read product descriptions, you know, so you know what everything is. So I'm going to start with an iconic watch. This is the, the Seiko, the SKX 007 K2 on a Jubilee bracelet. So the watch has a bezel. This is the bezel, the thing I'm turning now. It's unidirectional. Unidirectional means turns one way. I'm actually surprised at the number of people that think unidirectional means it spins both ways. That would be a bidirectional bezel. Diving bezels such as this one typically spin unidirectional. The thought process here is that you line up the arrow with the minute hand. As time elapses, you can quickly read the elapsed time via the bezel. And if you should happen to slip against something and knock the bezel, the only way it can move is this way. Therefore, shortening your time or, uh, you know, shortening your dive time, not lengthening it. Um, but anyway, uh, so you have a bezel on the outside, you have a crown, the crown is this thingy down here at the 4 o'clock. Crowns on watches can be in a multitude of places, they can be at the 4, they can be at the 3, they can be at the 2, you know, the old Seiko bullheads had them at the 12, you can have them destro which would be on the left, um, but so the crown is the, the thing that you use to set the time and sometimes wind the watch. A watch like this is not hand winding so you cannot wind it with the crown. Um, but typical operation of a mechanical automatic watch, even a quartz one, is that you, if the crown is screwed down, which this one was, you saw me unscrew it, which means I have to turn it counterclockwise a bunch of times, it pops and then I can spin it freely or I can pull it out. If I pull it out, two clicks, one, two, I can change the time. And I'll push it all the way back in, and I'll pull it out one click. One direction will change the day, date, excuse me, and the other direction will change the day. This is a bilingual calendar, so it flips through two uh, languages, English and Spanish in this case. They make them English and French, they make them English and Japanese, English and Arabic. Uh, you simply, you read the instruction manual, you set the language that you want it to display, and it will always display uh, that language for about 21 hours out of the day. And then when you're done, you push the crown back in. And then since this is a screw down crown, you push and turn clockwise and you and it goes all the way back in. Something I would like to point out that's important with every watch, not just automatics. Um, you never want to set the date between around the hours of 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Those six hours, you never want to force change the date. You, can, you only want to change the time, and you should really change the time only going forwards. I mean, you can change it backwards if you're nowhere near that zone. Um, but going backwards is a couple of things. Number one, the crown is screwed to a little stem inside the watch, 
and it is screwed in tight so it should not unscrew but if you give it the right impulse or if it is not in top condition you will you will actually wind up unscrewing the crown from the stem that will require the watch to be opened and the crown screwed back onto the stem uh, properly. Uh, but the other thing is that when the watch is changing the day and the date, you know, you saw these two windows flip. Let me just, I'll advance the time again, uh, 24 hours, so we're back in PM mode. So as the watch starts to turn, you'll see the date. See how it starts to, it's starting to flip over? And then the day will start to flip over afterwards. If you go to date change position at this time, any time between 9 and 3, and you try to force the date, there's a little plastic wheel inside the movement. Um, all 7S26s have it. It's a little piece of plastic. And you are, when you try to spin the crown, you force that little gear uh, against its wishes, and it loses a tooth. And what will happen after that is the watch will no longer change the date. It has to be open, the dial removed. It's not, you can't get it from the back. From the back of the movement, you have to actually pull the whole movement out, take off the hands, take off the dial, replace that little wheel, and then put the whole thing back together. All that for a nickel part. So you don't want to change the date, you know, again, between those hours. Okay, so that covers the crown. Now the dial itself is made up of, you know, this is, a, this is called a center seconds watch, three-handed center seconds, for obvious reasons. Uh, it's got a chapter ring. So the chapter ring is really, on this watch, the chapter ring is actually a, a physical ring that's separate from the rest of the dial. It's this ring around the outside. A chapter ring though is really just any race track around the outside of a watch that holds the numerals for the hours and minutes. Um, on a watch, I'll just bring up the Laco I have up here. The chapter ring here would just be those, you know, the indices all along the outside of the watch. You would call that a chapter ring, even though it's not physically a separate ring. So we covered the bezel, we covered the crown, cover a little bit of dial nomenclature, hands. Um, next we'll get into uh, cases and bracelets. So this solid stainless steel case, we would call this a screw down case back. Screw down because the whole thing actually turns, you see notches here. And this whole thing is secured to the, to the case um, and you use a, a spanner wrench, uh, a special kind of case back tool to put it on. Um, there's screw down case backs, there's case backs with separate screws, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, and then Laco, this Laco uses a pop back. And there's actually a detent on one of the sides where you put almost like a clamming knife underneath it and you pop it off. And these are generally the least water resistant. As you can see, this is water resistant to five atmospheres. Dive watches will almost always have a screw down case back such as this. 200 meters water resistant and the ones with individual screws um, they're usually good for 50 meters 100 meters though I have seen watches with them at 200 meters and 300 meters um, excuse me not 300 I've seen 200 which is kind of weird um, it's on one of the watches that I own uh, I don't dive with it I wouldn't trust it but um, it's obviously certainly possible uh, actually that brings me up to another point why was this why does the Seiko have a screw down crown um, the watch maintains its water resistance when the crown is screwed all the way in. If the crown is popped out, water resistance is gone. So you'd hate for the crown to deploy while you're underwater. Thus, they make it so that you have to screw the crown down when you're done. And once it's screwed down, now it's fully, it's fully water resistant. Okay. So this is on a Jubilee bracelet, to Seiko Jubilee bracelet. Jubilee is the style. The clasp is a fold-over deployant. This is the fold-over, and then this is the deployant. Pops open. You can put it on like a bracelet. You push this down, and you flip that back over. That's like a safety fold-over, so the, the, the bracelet cannot deploy. The Laco itself is on just a standard strap. This is a regular prong and buckle that you know most people are used to. Next, let's, next we'll discuss size. So I'm going to use, I'm going to bring the Laco up now to talk about size, but you know, it works almost for anything. So watches are measured in millimeters. Um, millimeters are a smaller, incre smaller increment than inches. Um, most of the world uses them, except for us here in the U.S., our, our friends in Great Britain, and maybe a couple other places. Uh, one millimeter is around 40 thousandths or four hundredths of an inch. 
Um, they were 25.4 millimeters to an inch. So it gives you an idea that you know you wouldn't want to say the watch is inch and a half in diameter, because the difference between inch and a half and inch and three eighths is is a lot easier to say in millimeters than it is to say in inches because you don't really get a get a feel for it. You know, an eighth of an inch doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, when you do it in millimeters, it jumps to a, a decent number that you can kind of you get a feel for, get a better feel for. So, how do we measure a watch? Well, most people will use a caliper. So this is a pair of calipers that we sell. It's a I'll say cheap. I usually use the word inexpensive, but it is a cheap caliper. It measures millimeters down here, inches up here. This is a true vernier caliper. For those of you that are into this stuff, um, it will measure down to 0.05 millimeter accuracy or precision. I uh, I wouldn't use it down to that level. We are looking for just merely, you know, the nearest millimeter usually. I mean, we can go to half millimeter if we want, or you could read the vernier scale if you want. Go online and you know, look up how to read vernier scale calipers. That will be a, a whole video in and of itself. Uh, but so a caliper like this would measure outside diameter with the jaws. I'll, I'll measure the watch in a second, but outside with the jaws. You can measure inside with the other set of jaws. So you can measure your, your, your lug width. And then it actually has also a depth, you know, all calipers do. They have a depth gauge that slides out the bottom. So you can measure depth. Uh, they do make the little tools that you can use to measure your straps. You know, you put the little prong in into the lug or you insert the strap into the detent and then you can see what size strap you have. But it's much easier, you know, this that, that would be a unitasker as uh, Alton Brown would say. The caliper for whatever these are, five bucks, six bucks, you can do anything watches and you can really measure anything else that you have to around the house. Uh, this goes up to six inches. What I love about these and what you should love about them too is that they are plastic. So you could do whatever you want. You are not going to damage the watch. You're not going to scratch it. Uh, you know, people take their high-end Japanese calipers and measure their watch. You know, their digital calipers. And you know, the the jaws are razor sharp. You touch the metal of the watch. You know, it's hardened case steel. The the calipers. You're going to scratch the watch. Um, so you know, plastic is definitely the way to go. Anyway, so they measure watches. You know, in diameter. So usually we'll try to take. Without the crown, we'll take the diameter of the case. So this Laco measures up to around 42 millimeter. If you can see the four, and then two dots over is 42 millimeters. It's a little. It's actually a hair over if you read the scale. And then if you guys want to read the Vernier scale at home, you can you can put down what it is in exact numbers down below if you like to read the Verniers. It's around 42. So we measure it without the crown. Almost all measurements that we give are always without the crown, not with it because with the crown doesn't really tell you much. And then this would, you measure the inside of the lugs. This is a 20 millimeter strap. So the distance between these two lugs, the lug, lug, these are lugs, is 20 millimeters. So you would look for a 20 millimeter strap if you wanted to replace it. Thickness, you can you measure it like so, around 12 millimeters thick. And then the other dimension you've seen me do in my videos would be tip to tip on the watch. And that you know, tip to tip here, so now this watch is around 49, about 50 millimeters tip to tip. And what that tells you is, you know, when you look at your wrist and you put the watch over it, you can get a feel for 50 millimeters is how far, you know, it, will it stick out past my wrist, will it not stick out past my wrist. Um, that's why it's, it's a valuable number and we don't use it on the website. Maybe one day we will add it. It will probably be a good addition. It's just a lot of legwork because manufacturers generally do not give it. So we'd have to physically measure each piece and, and then put the info up there. Um, Backpedaling a bit. Now the Laco has just a push-pull crown. No screw down. But it's the same operation. Actually, when you pull it out one click. Ready? Wait, it winds. Okay, you pull it out one click. One click. Now I'm going to turn it. You hear that? That's the date change. Yes, there's no date on the watch, but the movement certainly has a date option. Oh, excuse me, the movement certainly has a date. All they've done is just not, um, I don't know if there's a date ring on the movement, I, I didn't take it out to check, but they just didn't cut a hole in the dial. So there's no date. So the first click actually does nothing. Pull out two clicks. Now you can change the time. This watch is not hacking. See, the second hand still moves while I change the time, either with the Seiko, but you see that? Miotas do that. Go back hack. 
but nothing's wrong with it. Just when you change the time, the the mechanics inside the watch, when you go really give a little bit of back pressure to the crown, it makes a second hand jump. Anyway, the Laco has no bezel. It's got what you know what I a lot of times I hear it referred to as a lunette around the outside. Uh, just no bezel. It makes the watch appear a lot bigger. I think I've done about 15 minutes now. I think that's probably enough. Um, covered a lot of the basics, operations of a watch um, in different parts. Um, I'll, I'll do another video and we'll cover, uh, I don't know what to cover next. Maybe we'll cover uh, movements or straps. Um, Anyway, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com giving you a watch and learn video. Hopefully, you can, hopefully you picked up some nuggets of information. Uh, if even if you are a seasoned collector, uh, you know may, maybe you learned something. If not, you know stick around. You know, wait for the next one, and maybe the next one you, you'll learn something good. Uh, if you like this video, please please like it below. If you have not subscribed to our video our channel, please do so. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below and I'll be sure to address them. Thank you very much and I'll see you at the next one.